The project shown in this video can be found in the textbook Technical Drawing 101 with AutoCAD, available from SDC Publications. The Line Command. I'm going to show you how you can draw lines using the AutoCAD Line Command. There are several ways that you can actually access the Line Command, so I'm going to show you five popular ways to do it. First, Starting in release 2008, AutoCAD moved to having ribbons instead of toolbars. So this up here is an AutoCAD ribbon. I'm on the Home tab under the Draw panel and I'm clicking on the Line command. Notice how it's prompting me right there at the cursor to specify the first point. It's actually talking to me at the cursor because I have my dynamic input turned on. In release 2006, AutoCAD introduced the dynamic input option. And with this, it actually talks to me at the cursor so you can see what commands AutoCAD uh, has active and what it's looking for you to do next. That's with dynamic on. If I come down here and click on the dynamic icon on the status bar, I can turn it off and you can see it no longer prompts me at the cursor. It's only prompting me at the command line. If I turn it back on, it's prompting me at the cursor as well as the command line. I'm going to do the rest of this video using the dynamic input, so I'm going to be leaving it on. So that's the first way that you can start the line command. Another way that you can start the line command is using the toolbars. So I'm using the, the draw toolbar. Have it pulled up off to the side over here. The top icon is the line command. Another way that you can get to it is in the pull down menu. If you click on the draw pull down menu, the first command is the line command. Another option is to type the word line and I've started the line command. And lastly, even easier than typing the word line is just typing the letter L and enter and I've started the line command. I'm going to demonstrate five methods that you can use to draw lines with the dynamic command on. The methods that I'm going to be showing you are absolute, relative, polar, direct entry, and polar tracking. I'm going to start with an absolute coordinate. Now what absolute means is it's coming from 0 comma 0. In other words, on the Cartesian coordinate system, the origin, which right now is being represented by this little UCS icon, this represents 0 comma 0. So all of my coordinates when I'm using an absolute coordinate are going to start from this 0, 0, come over along the X and up along the Y. So I'll start the first one using the line c command up here on the ribbon. It says specify the first point. I'm going to type in 2 comma 2. So it came over 2 along the X and up 2 along the Y. Notice what I have here. Now that it knows the starting point, I have what's called the rubber band effect. It knows where I want to start that line, but it doesn't know where the next point is going to be. So it's kind of a rubber band effect here. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to type in an absolute coordinate to draw the next point of that line. When you have dynamic input turned on, it does not assume that the next coordinate that you type in is absolute. It assumes that it's relative and we'll talk about relative next. But to make a coordinate absolute, whenever you're typing in commands in AutoCAD, you're going to put in the pound sign. That pound sign tells AutoCAD, okay, we're going to start back at 0 comma 0 again. And we're going to type in the coordinate. So 10 comma 2 and you can see I made a straight line so it came over 10 on the x-axis and up 2 on the y-axis. I'm going to do it again with the pound sign 10 comma 
8. So I, and that one came over 10 along the x, 8 along the y, starting at our origin, which is 0 comma 0. So that is the absolute coordinates. The next option we're going to do are relative coordinates. Now with a relative coordinate, you still, I'll start the line command with the toolbar, the first point that it's asking for has to be an absolute coordinate. Every first point that you give is going to be an absolute coordinate because I don't have any relative coordinate to come from. So I'm going to type in 2 comma 3. So that first point that you give it is coming from 0 over 2 up 3. The next thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to tell it a distance. I'm not going to put in a pound sign which is forcing it to be absolute. When you have dynamic on, it assumes that this next one is relative unless you put in that pound sign. So what's going to happen is I'm going to give a coordinate and it's going to be relative to that last point that I just gave it. So relative to 2 comma 3 or in other words starting at 2 comma 3, I'm going to type in 7 comma 0. No pound sign. So from this 2, 3, it came over along the x7 but it did not go anywhere. It did not, it went 0 on the y. My next point is going to be 0 on the x, comma, 5 on the y. So relative to that last point that I just gave it, it went just straight up a distance of 5. Now you can also type in negative numbers to get it to go in the opposite direction. So when you travel to the right, that's a positive x. When you travel up, it's a positive y. But when you travel to the left, that's a negative x. And when you travel down, that's a negative y. So I can actually come over here. I'm going to type in negative 0.5 comma 0. And notice it made a perfectly straight line. It went negative 0.5, so it was traveling in the left direction. And then 0 on the y. Now I'll type in 0, comma, negative 0.1 and I was able to travel in the negative y direction or draw a line going straight down. I'm pressing enter to end these commands. When you're done drawing your lines, you just press enter or you can also press escape to get out of the line command. The next thing I'm going to show you is a polar coordinate. And with the polar coordinates, this is how you're going to be able to draw an angle. I'm going to start the line command. This time I'll use the pull down menu. Draw, line. I'm going to type in 2 comma 4 as my starting point. And you remember that's an absolute coordinate because I don't have anything to be relative to yet. Now what we're going to do, once AutoCAD came out in 2006, when they came out with this dynamic input, it was a real, they made it a lot easier to make angles, draw lines at angles. So really all I have to do here, you see there's two different fields. It's telling me to specify the next point. One says 4.7992, that's the distance of my line. And then I have another field that says 42 degrees and that's the angle. So all I have to do right now is just type in my distance. How long do I want that line? So I'll type, type 6 and then I'm going to press tab. Notice how my 6 got locked in. You can actually see a padlock and you can see no matter what angle I try to make this thing at, it's definitely set at a distance of 6. I want the line to go straight like the others so I'm going to set my angle at 0 but you can type in whatever angle you'd like. And then again, I'm going to draw another line. <coughs> so this one is going to be 4, tab, 90 degrees to make a perfectly straight line. I'm done with this command, so I'm going to press enter to end the command. The next step that we're going to do is direct entry. And this is actually how you draw most of your lines. It's good to know what a relative coordinate, an absolute coordinate, and a polar coordinate um, what each one of those are, but 
how we how we actually do our drawings is we'll start off with an absolute coordinate or we'll just kind of click where we want it to start and then we use direct entry and with direct entry what you're doing is you're actually just pulling your mouse in the direction that you want to go and you're typing the distance so I'm going to use the line command I'll just type in the word line at the command line and for this one I'm going to start my line at 2 comma 5 you can really click anywhere I'm just for the sake of this exercise keeping it uniform so I'm typing in 2 comma 5 and then notice I can just pull this in any direction that I'd like to go and specify a distance one thing I'm going to do now is turn on my ortho and that you can either click this button down here or you can press F8 in your function keys on your keyboard what ortho does for me is it ensures that I make a perfectly straight line it goes perfectly horizontal or vertical it follows my cursor so whatever my cursor looks like that's what I'm that's what my ortho is locked into I can't make an angled line even if I tried to right now I've only got 0 and 90 degree increments so I'm just gonna pull it over this is direct entry so I'm just gonna pull it over and type the distance that I want to go so I'll just type in a distance of 5, pull it up, type in a distance of 3, and I'm done drawing. And I've just drawn a line using direct entry. The last thing that I want to show you, I'll still use direct entry, but instead of using the ortho command, I'm actually going to show you how to use polar tracking so I'm gonna start the line again this time I'll just do the L enter my start point I'm gonna type in 2 comma 6 and right now I still have ortho turned on I need to turn off ortho and I can turn on polar and what's nice about having polar on is look what happens I can make a line at any angle that I want but as I get close to angle zero do you see that green line it kinda guides me it sorta snaps me into angle zero AutoCAD is just assuming if you're that close you're probably wanting to make a straight line so it helps you to make a straight line but it doesn't lock you into it the way that or I should say a horizontal line but it doesn't lock you into it the way that ortho does so I can still make any angle I'd like but as I get up into 90 degrees then I have the option it kind of snaps me in to having a perfectly vertical line so still using direct entry I'm just gonna pull this off to the side and I'm gonna type in my distance of 4 pull it straight up type in my distance of 2 press enter to end my command and you've seen now all the different ways that you can draw lines and the different input methods that you have for drawing lines in AutoCAD.